Hey, welcome. It's the Exponential Files. It's a special edition. We've got a, a special guest with us, Brian Ernst. Brian Ernst lives a very interesting life. Uh, he's in search of uh, a great steak, I know, but he's also in search of uh, <laughs> growing your business as a coach. You've been, uh, I forgot to mention who we are and what the Exponential Files is. So um, this upsets Jim when I do this. So I'm sorry. Jim Lowenstern. Is I can do it creator. myself if you want. <laughs> I'm Jim Lowenstern, host, co-host, whatever. Uh, this is Larry Lawfer, my co-host uh, and uh, soon to be ex-producer. <laughs> um, yes. And the Exponential Files is all about... Uh, the best and the brightest here at EXP. It's people you wish you were, people you need to know. And today's guest, Brian Ernst, is exactly that kind of a person. Welcome to the show, Brian. Thanks, Larry. Thanks, Jim. Thanks for having me. So you're in Las Vegas. That's that's quite a background you have. Uh, Coming out of the darkness? <laughs> well, you know, you're the photographer, right, Larry? Okay. Yeah, well, what was... do you want to see in the picture? Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm exactly. saying? What do you want? Exactly. I, I don't want to be distracted by anything else. I don't know. Yeah, it's just kind of a fun thing. There you go. Uh, uh, Jim, you want to jump in here? Or are you frozen? Looks like he's frozen. Whoop, he was gone. Um, no, uh, seriously, uh, Brian is a coach and um, works with people all over the country, don't you, Brian? I do. Absolutely. Yeah. I do. Um, what are the characteristics of, uh, have you ever been coached yourself? Oh gosh. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Still. I mean, I, it's kind of a philosophy. I, I believe everybody needs to have, and, and I, maybe coach isn't the best word, a mentor, a guide. Right. Um, coaching has been so convoluted and so diluted, Right. but I, I think it's so important to learn from others who have been to where you want to go or who are right. where you want to go right. and what that path is. Right, because are you even on the right path to get to your goals? People have goals, but they don't really right. think about all the problems associated with getting there and how to get through those yeah. things. Yeah, well, when I, I, there's a bunch of revel, uh, revelations as you go along this path, and almost everyone starts reading different kinds of books. Uh, Think and Grow Rich, and sure. what are some of the books that that influenced you early on? Oh wow, geez, I have a whole list of books. Oh my gosh, uh -huh. it depends if it's in real estate sales in particular or more life and personal growth. Yeah. So, um, I just finished the book Flourish by uh, oh Martin. Here, I'll show you the the notes. I, I it was it, he wrote Authentic Happiness too. This is oh, the, the yeah. notes from it. Seligman. I just just finished this book. Uh huh. Um, very. He's a very uh. Very interesting, very interesting book. I'll probably go through it again. But I, sure. I, I'm a big fan of like certain personal growth books, like The Success Principles by Jack Canfield. Like okay. I've gone through that, I don't know how many times. I actually trained to teach it too, um, sure. that material, because it changed my life so much that I wanted right. to share it with other people too. And right. it's a it's a way that I learned. This is by teaching right. something. Right. Um, there's some other types of books that I, I, I enjoy the... Uh, the philosophical points of view of certain things. Okay. It could be everything from uh, Mark Manson's books, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a... <laughs> That's a great book, though. And then his, yeah. his follow-up to that one is Life is yeah. a Book About Hope. That yep. one I, I thought was... Yep. I, I enjoyed it. It was humorous to me. Um, yeah. It's a different, just a different Never perspective. Never Split the Difference, Chris Voss. Never Split mm -hmm. the yeah. Difference. That's... Yep. That's kind of a pivotal book, but I, I was talking about everybody always mentioned uh, uh, Anthony Robbins. You know, there's the people that go that path, and, oh, yeah. and uh, yeah. Brian. There's a who is it? The, the uh, I followed Brian's path. I forget Brian's last name, but Brian Tracy. Um, Brian that. Tracy. Yeah. You know, but it, it, I I find with with coaches that um, uh, their personal um, growth is how they coach which makes perfect sense oh yeah oh yeah absolutely and i do believe yeah. that your personal growth your professional growth there is a right. correlation to that absolutely right. mm -hmm. what would you think your sweet spot in the coaching business is i mean who's your best kind of like um they're sitting out there watching right now and they're wondering you know 
Um, really, it's going to be somebody that's in production that is mm -hmm. probably doing 10 million a year in volume. And I don't really like mm -hmm. to use volume. You're probably doing right. a deal a month, give or take. All right. Okay. And what I generally do is somebody who has the basic knowledge of real estate, reset their habits and reset their habits, give them a new skill set. And in the right. same period of time, they're doubling, tripling, or quadrupling their business. Yeah. I did that with one of my coaching clients here in the past year or so. He was five years in the business, never made more than 60 grand. Mm -hmm. First full year with me, he made 410. All right. Coaching client that I was working with this morning. Uh, I actually coached him for eight years. And then I, we, we basically didn't coach him for about four or five years. And he came mm -hmm. back because he just not at the level. But when I met him, he was about 30 grand a year. Within right. about two years, I got him consistently over 300 grand a year, consistently every single year. And, and, and now, what what marketplaces are we talking about? Anywhere in the United States. Anywhere. Anywhere in the United States, because this it, it, it's some of the basic stuff that just needs to be put into place. Um, right. Different different systems, skill sets, um, habits, mindset, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, leverage. Right. And what can you leverage? And what are you are you putting your time to dollar productive activities, or are you just spinning your wheels on stuff and saying I'm right. working, but it's not going to make you right. any money by doing what you're doing? Yeah. Every day I get up and I make lists and, and I put procrastination on my list and some days I don't do it. So I'm, I'm proud of philosophy. those days. Uh, that's, uh, that's an interesting philosophy. I have not to do list. I just <laughs> admit I'm not going to do it and put it on that list. Well, uh, the they list. say 80% is good. So, uh, you know, put on things there, you know, wash the pig. The pig doesn't I, I, I have I have to mention when I, when I set up uh, this time block with you, Brian, I noticed that pretty much the entire week and the entire day, every week, every day was blocked out. <laughs> this was like the only time available for the next year. So there's a few more spaces. Time, time. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but yeah, that's not it. crazy exaggeration. So why don't we talk about time blocking and how yeah, well, important that is? Because obviously it's, it's mm -hmm. important. But by appointment only. That's really what I'm, I've been living my life by, by appointment only. And by doing that, oh my goodness. I mean, I, I really enjoy life so much more. I do yeah. so much more um, in life. It's just, we go on for days on this type of stuff, but it's the efficiency factor too. And right. the different books that I've written also really get into minimizing the hours in real estate sales and production because you're efficient and effective at that. And you can live your life and take on another right. business or just take on your hobbies or live your life. You know, that's really what I think it comes down to. Yeah. But yeah, I did. I do. I do. Everything's time blocked so that I can be at my best too. Right. So that I know when I'm going to speak to somebody, it's not late at night. They're drunk. They're whatever. I mean, I've spent too much time over 20 years in real estate by dealing with people who, you know, oh, not present. Meet. Yeah, it's eight o'clock at night. You know, we can meet then. The kids are crawling over them. The dogs are jumping on me. I'm a dog guy. I have a dog, but it's so it's like, and then and then they're drinking. It's like I, this is not productive. So right. uh, I try to avoid those types of things as much as I can well, and schedule every least, time intentionally. But at least you know, in in that kind of a uh, a setup, a, a, a meeting by appointment, I think that's absolutely wonderful. You're never inappropriately dressed. You know, somebody just shows up, somebody, you know, uh, wants to Zoom or you walk by and, you know, anyway, I digress. So you, you mentioned that you've written books? Yeah, I have uh, three number one international best-selling books that are out there on the market. Well, let's let's talk about it. What was the first one about? How long ago did you write it? The first one here is the, the Half Millionaire Real Estate Agent, Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, 52 secrets to making half a million dollars a year while working 20 hour work week. And I, I was, at, I spent 14 years at Remax and that's where I got a lot of the stuff. It wasn't Remax. They gave it to me. It was trying to solve agents problems with Remax. Right. Uh, right. I was a manager in Remax office and I was coaching and training agents in the office. And it just like, people would come up to me when I would go to the different events. Like, how do you do what you do? And it's like, well, I train people to do this, you know, you right. can sign up for this, but really it got to the point where I said, like, I'm just going to write this down. And I, I had an outline for this. God, I don't even know how long ago the book was published and released it was five years ago, six years ago, it came out. Um, no, sorry. I was with the XP at the time. So it was right before 
20, it was fall of 2019 is when it came up. Sorry, my ears are a little bit off here. Um, and it was great. It was, it was fantastic. And then I actually had the second book already finished before the first book because it first book, it just was challenging to put the right tone in the book. And then the second book cracked that one out super, super quick. And actually, I actually made that one's called cracking the home sellers code to give to sellers, to give to homeowners, to know the process, to really set proper expectations for sellers. So they understood what that process was. Honestly, Jim Larry, I was sick and tired of asking answering the same question. Yeah. Okay. And the question was this, what's your commission? What's the price? Of my, what's, what's the price of my home? I don't know. I haven't seen your home yet. Let's get together. I'm available tomorrow at two or would a uh, Saturday at nine work better for you? Yeah. I go right to close on that appointment. No, no. What's your commission? We're not having you come over. We're not commission. I run a real estate business. I don't know what I'm selling yet. I would be happy to give you all the information you're looking for, but I do need to get that information right. so that I can get you what you need. And I, I'm sure you can appreciate that so that yeah. you can make that educated decision that you need yeah. to make. Because and then when you shop, you're shopping yeah. agents, you're shopping price and commission. You guys can familiar with this game, right? Yeah. I'm going to yeah. tell them a higher price and a lower commission. I'll get the listing, have them come down in price. I'll sell it. No, 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 no. It's the wrong question. That, that's so what's the right, so what's the right question? You give them the right question? I do. I actually do. And, and what's the right question they should how, be asking? How are you going to net me more money than anybody else? I don't know. I haven't seen your home yet. Let's get together. I'm available tomorrow at two or would uh, Saturday at nine work better for you? I'll go right and close for the appointments. Because yeah. I don't know if I even want to work with these people. That's the right. thing. If, if if agents are desperate for money, pay their mortgage, pay their car payment, their insurance, they're think through this. Do you want to work with these people? And that's what I didn't do in the beginning of my career. It took me quite a while to figure right. out, wait a minute, I've wasted a lot of time with the wrong people and I could have done this way more efficient. So my conversion rate of listing appointments to listing takens was lower, Okay. But my listings taken to listing closed was like almost at 100%. It was just right. people whose job transfers basically didn't go through. All right. I took it off the market or whatever it was. But a lot of times it would go late through later. I'd list it again. Right. And that's that's what it was. I was very intentional on who I worked with. Just like setting up appointments. Very intentional with my time. And they appreciate it. I had one of the highest list price to sale price ratios whenever I was doing this. And... My clients were so much happier. That's right. the thing. Right. They I spent so much happy. less time. I spent less yeah. time with them. They were happier and yeah. they got what they wanted. So right. you're teaching uh, the sellers how to sell on their own or how to pick a, a broker in the second book? It, it really can be either. Okay. It, it's really to work with an agent because for the most part, um, in most of the areas that I have worked in my real estate career, to get the maximum amount of net you really need the agent involved, a good agent. Right. A good and explain agent. to the, we'll, we'll, we'll call them the public, yeah. anybody that's not a professional in the business, why that's true. Yeah, that's why I wrote the book. And But explain, well, why? why? Because it, it, it's not just saving the commission. That's oh, a very it's small. It, it's no, all it's marketing. Small it, at the end of the day, it's money. And that's that's what it comes down to. Is I want to well, show it's you. It's also the skill of the negotiator. Oh, these are all the bullet points that go into getting the end result. Absolutely. You know, the network of the broker, oh, their absolutely. relationships with other brokers and their experience. Mm -hmm. I see so many brokers, they, they put the brakes on a negotiating process because, well, it was two o'clock. You didn't get your offer in. It's 430. Are you kidding me? You can't wait another hour to get your client another five, 10, 20,000, 100,000. Who knows? Right. Well, this is the, these are the problems that I think more agents need to have. Okay. Yeah. I don't think enough agents have this problem to learn how to solve this problem right. because they're not in it enough. They're not, or, that, most or, or they don't, don't care. Business. It's not to them. It's true. not that important. Oh, well, it's all situational. Absolutely. They forget, they forget who they're really working for. They, 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 they they're, they're working for themselves. They forget that they're really working for somebody else as a fiduciary. Sure. And when I'm, listing a home. I, I'm not the negotiator. I'm just a facilitator. If you really think about it, I'm facilitating a transaction. And what I was taught is I'm here to help people with a decision they already made it was to move. That's the decision. They made a decision to move. I'm here to help with that. I've changed that through the years, made it a little more cold maybe, but my job is to facilitate a transaction from a decision to move that's already been made. I'm just here to facilitate this, get you through this process. I can make it all cheerful, not, but 
it, it can be messy. I, I like to set the expectations. And I've had a lot of clients come back at Let's say, Brian, we really appreciate you always letting us know what the next two, three steps are, what's coming up. So we're, we're never surprised. You kind of give us the surprises. range of things of where we're going to go with this, what to expect. So none of this was surprising. Really appreciate that. We didn't, you know. Right. So that's it's a process of communication. It's a process of setting expectations. And I think that's the best word that I can use for this is setting the expectations for that. And if we're talking about the sales pitch to say, why well, use an agent versus not an agent? Well, it's just a pitch. Look at the money. Look at where what, what I do or what another agent does that can net you more money at the end of the day. And that was the process for the cracking the home sellers code book. That's really the basics of it. And if somebody said, I can do this without you. Great. You don't have to use me. I'm okay with that. Now, if I felt differently in that particular situation saying, well, all right, if you don't want more money, that's fine. That's a joy. What was, so what was the third book about? You mentioned third before. book. Now, third book is interesting. It's uh, The Power of the Published. All right. Now, I'll be honest with you. I didn't actually write the book. And that's that's the fun of it. My publisher wrote the book. And I, I like I have ideas. And when you're around the right people, and you can share those ideas and they can actually take action on it. Amazing things can happen. So I'm a big fan of the Jim Rohn quote. You're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. You, you guys were familiar with that. Um, that quote, I kind of, it's kind of my life. You're the average of the five people. I'm very intentional with my time and who I spend my time with. And I spent a lot of time with my publisher in writing these books. And I said, where do you get the majority of your business from? And he goes, Referrals from who? From my best clients. I said, why don't you take your book, put my name on it, put their name on it, check with all the different, regular, you know, Amazon, how you publish this type of stuff, put it out there and share it with everybody. I mean, pick a couple clients you want to do this with because you got to set it up. You know, there's a cost to doing this. And it was so funny. He came back to me months later, said, Brian, I'm going to take you up on your idea. I'm like, what idea? I give you like three ideas every time we talk. Which one are you talking about? <laughs> we talk like, you know, how often? He's like, the idea, the book idea. What book idea? <laughs> Which one are you talking about? <laughs> He's like, I really like the idea of co-authoring one of my books with people because that's where I get business from. And I was like, yeah, it was a good idea. Yeah. It was like two months ago. But yeah, it was a good idea. That'd be great. It was probably just a kernel of an idea that sprouted. Oh, I, I literally said this exact book right here is the book you, I would do this for because this is the book that really shares the benefits of being published. Right. And this is really your, I don't, I don't even want to say sales pitch. This is, this is who you are. And this is what you have a passion for doing because he's had a lot of other books too. I can't tell you how many number one international bestsellers he's made. It, it's, it's, it, it's 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 really interesting. It's fascinating. I'm I'm just I'm I'm grateful to be a part of that. Um, but these ideas, when you're around the right people, they can implement them. They can make your life right. amazingly different in good and bad ways. Right. And uh, that's why I'm a big fan of, you know, that Jim Rome quote: "You're the average right. of the five people you spend the most time with." Right. So let's talk about EXP for a moment. Uh, sure. You're more into coaching than production? Or are you in production at all? Um, I am in production. My whole business right now is more on a referral basis. So I pretty much refer everything out, um, which I really don't spend that much time at all on it. And and it's something that I don't know enough, if enough agents even know how to do that. Um, I have a network of agents that I've trained and worked with through the years. And depending on who the client is, I, I, it's a handoff. Is really all it is. And sometimes it's even less of a handoff. I'm just literally texting or emailing somebody. So I'm not even making contact with certain people. I get the referral check. The referral, it just goes through the, pro, you know, goes through and God, I love that. I'm so grateful to be a part of eXp and all the opportunities because my business is in Illinois for real estate. I'm in Las Vegas because I can do coaching anywhere. Okay. I, actually, I came out to Las Vegas right before the pandemic to do live events, which I just, I was doing. And then obviously it shut down. And then I reevaluated, do I really want to do that? I mean, I've, I've had choices. I've had options. And I'm, I'm so grateful because if I was not with eXp, 
I don't think I ever would have learned what I've learned. I don't think I would have taken these options because the different brokerages and companies I've been with, the different brokers, team leaders, uh, owners, all that kind of stuff, they were just pulling me in their direction of what they thought was best for themselves, not necessarily for me. And EXP is a, EXP is a, well, some brokers weren't doing anything for the brand in my, right. in my background, because it's just literally if someone would say, look, whoever's, whatever's the best company, I would switch the franchise to that if I needed to. Right. Now, would they actually, I don't know. All right. But the XP, it's do what you want. So just don't be breaking the rules. Don't break the laws. Don't do anything silly. Um, and I've had the freedom to do that. And yeah. I've, you know, teach an EXP university too. I've done that for five years. And it was just kind of just have a good microphone. It's really and have a have a computer and you're on. And it's just like, man, I can do my life so much differently. And I see so many people doing it in so many different ways. Sure. Why can't I do that? So sure. so explain in your in your mind what the difference is between EXP and any other brand, any other company any other real estate office? Well, there's, there's, there's a lot of differences in specifically depending on what company you're comparing. Right. Um, Let's go general. Let's not EX, get too it, specific. Yeah. EXP is a, is it, to me, I, I look at EXP as a platform, a platform to run my real estate business. Cause at a certain point in my career, I said, I'm just going to run my own brokerage. I'm just going to open my own brokerage up. Right. And, and that's where I was. Okay. Uh, I've been with Remax. I've been with Keller Williams. And I thought, I'm just gonna do my own thing. But honestly, I did not want to do the paperwork. I did not want to have the liability of agents running around doing the crazy stuff that agents do. Now, <laughs> let's be honest, the majority of agents don't actually sell anything that are licensed. The licensees, they don't, the majority of them don't actually sell. They're right. just licensees. Create liability, produce nothing. It's one of the easiest licenses, professional licenses to get out. I there. think I dated her. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah, it is. So that that being said, I, I I didn't want the problems associated with that. Yeah. I mean, I I'm a big fan of picking my goals, but also picking my problems. All right. My life philosophy too is pick your problems. I mean, it was in the Mark Manson book, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a. Yeah, great book. So here's the problems that I want. Hey, right. we're on the internet. We can say fuck. You didn't have to. You, you didn't have to. We'll, we'll, Most people we'll, who know the book will know the answer to that, yeah. too. Yeah, I guess they would. It's, and, it's, ble it's bleeped on the book, too, by the way. So, um, Drew, Jim, Larry, what problems do you want in your life? Like, if you had to categorize them, okay? Do you want real estate problems? Do you want financial problems? Do you want relationship problems? No problems. Hey, Jim, do you want hot dog problems? Okay. They're all problems. Well, when, when you Google, Googling me? <laughs> Larry was talking about your hot dogs. I, so. I fed him. Mm -hmm. I fed him a little oh, bit. Oh, the, the savage winner. Yes. That's so, right. so, so if you had to think. <laughs> no, about I don't this, want the, the, the hot dog problem. And, and some people go, Brian, you're being negative. This is negative. And I literally just read the book Flourish talking about how much negativity does. And it just, I, I just love the statistics in that book about negative mindsets of things. And but it, it comes down to problems or challenges. What, what do, semantics? What do you want in your life? Okay, Jim, what's a problem and a category you're comfortable with in life? Family. We don't want to start with uh, with my problems. Let's let's just well, you, let's, you just, let's just you let's them. just veer off into so, uh, Larry. Hey, so, uh, yeah, okay, I, I I got a good one for you. Let yeah. the dog in and out, in and out, in and out. Yeah, that, okay. that's a okay. problem. All right, yeah. that's, All right. that's it. That's My a dog. real problem. Yeah, she's right, leashed right, right, right now. I took care of. So oh, there we go. There we go. So, so you got a what is that? That's a, don't 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 tell me. That's a golden doodle. That is a that is a it's a miniature golden doodle. He's a little shaggy at the moment. Very very cute. Um, here's the problems I want. All right, are you ready? Are you ready for this? Yeah. yeah, sure. I want vacation problems. Yeah, I can solve vacation problems. Enough money solves vacation problems. I'll the people who are on vacation. They want your money. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's solvable. So I've gotten really good at because I've been in Vegas for over three years. Vacation problems. I mean, I right. every it, I'm a steakhouse connoisseur. Um, 
like I, I'm almost I call it a connoisseur. Some people would call it a snob or picky or something. No, no, I'm a connoisseur. I really get into it. And I. So what's the best steakhouse in Vegas? It's a great question, but I'm going to say it might not be the best question, Jim, because it's subjective. What kind of steak are you looking for? What kind of steakhouse? Are we talking about the ambiance of the steakhouse? Are we looking right. for the just the steak, the side okay. dishes? We'll, 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 we'll split into whatever categories we want. Give us the top five for the most important reasons that you would choose it in the first place as number one in a category. So just because a steakhouse will be expensive doesn't necessarily mean it's good. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of making sure it's the quality Um it's just the quality beef involved with it. There's a there's a great there's a great there's a great YouTube clip uh, YouTube video about the the business of steakhouses and how high end steakhouses they compare like Ruth Chris to like an Outback into a Texas Roadhouse and how much money they make at these high end steakhouses. But it's really the same menu. It's high end food. They're paying a lot for a lot of this stuff, and they're actually have more space than some of these like an Outback or a Texas Roadhouse. In the profit margins, it it would shock you how that how it actually pans out. You would think it may be in reverse of what people would make on that. So to answer your question, in Vegas, you could throw a rock and hit a decent steakhouse in Vegas because that's the thing. You're in a major casino. They want to keep you there. That If you want good seafood, go to a good steakhouse in Vegas because that's not the biggest draw from the clientele that come here. There's ambiance in different these different steakhouses that can be anywhere from like club like to old school Frank Sinatra level at the more of the tourist traps. Okay. But are they using prime steak, Wagyu? Where are they getting it from? What's what are the distributors that they're getting that beef from? How is that beef being fed, raised, um, cultivated? Like okay. they're getting this is this is gonna be a buck then. Uh, yeah, saying, yeah, that's it. You're you're asking me a very connoisseur question. So, so, so. okay, I'll I'll break it down. Capital Grill or Ruth Chris? Let's just we'll we'll, we'll do a uh, we'll, we'll just so on the, connoiss- on the connoisseur steakhouse. They're both chains, okay, right. right? And they both have some very traditional setups. Like Ruth Chris is going to serve it on a five hundred degree plate. Do you know what I'm saying? That's mm-hmm. their and I love I love the traditions of those. Emeril Lagasse does a lot of that stuff in his restaurants too. Um, Delmonico. See, steakhouse. I don't think there's a comparison myself. I think well, Ruth's Chris is more expensive. I don't think the ambiance is good. I don't think the food is as good. That's just you, me. You think Ruth's Chris is less than Capital Grill? I I do, but okay. And then we'll go to Morton's and see. They're all to me. I don't know if all, we have time for all that. They're it's all a whole on the other lower show. So like an Outback, it doesn't make the scale. Okay, they're not even serving no, prime steak. Of, of course not. All these three that you just mentioned are on the bottom level of my rating scale. Okay, you know what I'm saying? And it's not that they're bad. I've eaten it all of them, that, and I've eaten all of them. That's, in major that's why. Well, just give us your favorite, because we're about thirty minutes in. <laughs> oh gosh, you know some of them are going to be specialty places like Matt, um, Harbor Steak and the New Resorts World. Okay, okay. they have it. Okay. Um, I, I still love the classics of Delmonico Steakhouse that Emeril Lagasse has in the Venetian. Um, Mastro's Ocean Club is a mul- they do have chain they have multiple locations too. They actually specialize in seafood, but in Vegas they sell yeah. way more steak. We, we have one in Boston. I would I was and, there uh, last month, and it's Very different. Good. And that's Very what good. I that's where I test when I travel. I go and travel, and I stake out this go to steakhouses, and I want to see how consistent they are across the country. And they are not all consistent right. because right. some are franchise owned and some are independently oh. owned. And that's the twist of it. You have In and Out Burger uh, in uh, in Vegas. Yeah. That's 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 good to know. There's lots of those. Anyway, uh, hey, if people want to get in touch with you, Brian, how how would they do that? Oh, geez, um, his, his phone number is right there. They can call me. Okay, yeah. um, there you go. Six three zero seven three zero zero eight three eight. And then it's another been... thing. Go ahead. Brian, BrianEarnsCoaching.com. They can set an appointment with me. That's probably what I recommend, the setting an appointment with me. There we go. And Brian at BrianEarns.net is my email. Um, basically, you can track, if you can't find me, I, I don't exist. I mean, you can, at some point, you can figure out some way to. Google if you can't me. find me, you're too stupid to work with me. 
Probably. And then all you need to do is figure out a way to set up an appointment with me. Time to talk. I'll talk. Sure. What do you want to talk about? Sure. Sure. Here's my calendar link. Sure. And I'm yeah. happy to talk. It's awesome. Thank you. I'm sorry I missed a few minutes. That was my uh, Wi-Fi connection just saying. Oh, not today, Jim. Good to see you. Thanks, Thank you, Brian. Good to see you. Thank, Thank you, Brian. you, Larry. It's the Exponential Great. Files. We'll see you next see week. No, we'll actually see you Friday. later this week. Friday. Yeah, we'll We're having, uh, who are we having? Kurt, uh, Kurt Yang. Kurt Yang. Number Thank one, you, Brian. Uh, Thanks again. Thanks.